Hello, this is Joachim from Dark Tranquility and In Morning, and you are watching Rick, Richard Metal Fan. Hey, what's up, guys? Episode 202 of Richard Metal Fan Interviews, calling from Zoom, and I'm here with Joachim Strandberg Nilsson, plays with Dark Tranquility, Faithful Darkness, In Morning, Non Exist, Wolves Within, and probably a plethora of other bands I don't even know about. So, how are you doing, say, man? Uh, I'm great, and you? Not too bad, not too bad. Just had to like hurry up and snorf down a, a quick lunch, and so now we're ready for an interview. Yeah, okay, nice. What time is it there at your place? Right now, it is like twelve oh five in the afternoon. Oh, nice. Yeah, I had to like quickly snorf down like a sandwich and chips, and then head on over to do my, do this interview. And here yeah. we are. Nice. Anyway, yeah. So, kind of the format is I want to do like a rundown of your discography and talk about like your musical history. So, take you back to young Joachim. So, kind of growing up in Sweden, what were the first bands that got you into metal and what made you want to start playing drums? Uh, I think the first metal band I listened to was uh, Children of Bodom, uh, and then also In Flames and Fin Troll, Dimmu Borgir, Dark Tranquility. Yeah, uh, little would you know. <laughs> Yeah, so a, a lot of uh, melodic death metal. Yeah. Yeah, and I love, like, the, like, I feel like the Sweden has, like, the great scene, like, of course, at, at the gates, Dark Tranquility and Flames. So we're, we're kind of, I remember somebody described, like, 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 Sweden is pretty much, like, one of the biggest places in death metal. Like, I don't think without that, I don't think, I'll, I'll, like, a lot of that, I guess, like, the, uh, they, like, the metalcore bands, especially in America. I know, like, like Kill Switch Engage, Shadows Fall, all, all they pretty much take influence from the Gothenburg scene. I wonder if they are under thinking, be like, what have we done? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. probably. I think uh, Swedish metal has influenced a lot of uh, musicians and music, uh, yeah, the world. Yeah, I don't know how it how you guys do it, but just it just sounds so fucking awesome. You got to have like a secret or something. <laughs> the secret is uh, practice. I think, yeah, can't go, <laughs> can't go wrong there. So, uh, so from what I was doing my 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 research, I was just looking at your page on my archives. I believe your first band was called Thrive. Thrive, tell me about like that. I don't think nobody has ever talked about that. Uh, no, it was a really small band. Yeah, I think we recorded like one or two EPs. Um, I was maybe 16, 17, 18. Uh, it was kind of some kind of progressive uh, power metal. Um, mm. We only had a few shows in Sweden, local shows, uh, and that's it. Yeah, was that like your 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 first band ever? Was was there anything before that? Uh, before that, I played uh, in a small like emo core band, uh, and also a Led Zeppelin tribute tribute band. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And I then of course I guess going from that you did a. Uh, Morgate, I in you in 2009, you did the denial of reality EP. Tell me about like that. Uh, I think that was uh, more the fastest band I played with so so far, um, and um, it was a nice challenge because I haven't played uh, that kind of brutal, more brutal uh, death metal before. Um, we play, also played for a couple of years. Um, only played in Sweden, except for one show in Lübeck in Germany. Yeah. yeah, and I especially love like that, like that EP. Like I know there's like two versions of the red and the black. There's that, and then then there's the one that's the commercial sellout version. <laughs> like yeah. tell me about like that. <laughs> I just think that's well, funny. I was I was so yeah. I was uh, oh, it was a long time ago. I don't really remember. Uh, I haven't heard those songs in ten plus years. I think. Um, I remember we made uh, different versions just for fun. I guess. Yeah, can't really take yourself that seriously. You just try to have some moments to just have fun. Yeah. And then I guess next up is a uh, Faithful Darkness. You joined in two thousand nine. So, so how did you hook up with those guys? Uh, I went to the music uh, academy in Malmo, uh, and I met uh, a guy named Johan. Most of my friends' name is Johan. It's a very common name in Sweden. Um, and uh, I first started playing keyboard for two shows with that band. Uh, and when the drummer quit, uh, I started playing drums instead. 
And I think that was the first band uh, that played more melodic death metal that I played with. Yeah, so so you start so you also played keyboards as well. I never knew that. Yeah, yeah. I play keyboards, I play guitar, bass. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Do you find like like playing with like different instruments maybe be like express like a different side of you creatively? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um I think um after drums, I know I'm I think the my second main instrument is piano. Um and then I uh, at that instrument I can express uh, a lot of stuff. Drums is of course just rhythms; it's no melodies. Um, so with piano, I prefer to play more the emotional and more beautiful music. And on drums, I prefer the hard, a hard metal and rock. Yeah, yeah, but so... definitely different kinds of music. Yeah, yeah. So t tell me about like that first Faithful Dark darkness album black mirrors reflection and i think that's a pretty good good album where was that recorded at uh the drums were recorded in um, the abyss uh in sweden um and that was my first time recording in a more fancy studio um i think we recorded all the drums in like four or five hours just like bah, 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 because uh, <laughs> we didn't have that much money and the studio cost quite a lot so we just made it as quickly as possible. Yeah, just like a quick, quick go, go, go. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, next up is uh, the second reflection, Shani P. And hard to believe this year does mark 10 years of that. So do you have like a certain feeling about it or a different feeling about it now as opposed to when you first released it? Um no, I don't think so, uh, because Faithful Darkness was the, one of the, um, I think it was the first band that I played a lot of shows with and that I felt that we were going somewhere with the music. Um, so everything I've done with the band still means a lot to me. Still after 10 years, I can go back and listen to it and, and feel kind of proud over what we did back in the days. Nice. And then, of course, the the most recent full length that that you did with Faithful Darkness, Arch God, I thought that was a pretty good follow up up to Black Camera's Reflection because usually with the debut album you have like your entire life to write, and there was a lot of hype with the that that first album. But when it came to ma making Arch God, did you feel like pressure to follow up Black Camera's Reflection? Uh, no pressure. Uh, I, I was excited because we had uh, uh, our uh, guitar player and the guy who sang clean vocals quit and then we got a new guitar player who also sang clean vocals uh, and i was super excited to see how that would turn out because they were both super good at what they did um and it in the end it's it, i'm really proud of that album because it's it's super cool i can still listen to it myself and feel like those are good songs yeah yeah, I know that next year will be the 10 year anniversary of that. And it has been 10 years since we've had any new Faithful Darkness albums. Is there any idea plans to make a new one or nah? Nah, we haven't played together in forever. Um, so I don't think there will be any. We have a couple of songs that we never recorded. So maybe in a few years we will decide to do something with them, but I'm not sure. All right, that, that's fair enough. But then I also know you do some session work because I know you also worked with uh, Blinded by Darkness. I know you've helped out on for the drum tracks with their EP, Scars Inside. So tell me about like that, how did you end up playing drums on that EP? Which one do you mean? Like uh, the Blinded, Blinded by Darkness. Like you, I think I know you did like some session dr drums on uh, Scars Inside. How did you end up like playing drums for that? Oh, right. Yeah, I think... Um... That has to have been the guitar player from Faithful Darkness. Um, so after he quit, then he started his own project, and then he asked me to do the drums. So that's basically it. Yeah, I know he did that, and he did, did the other EP, the beginning, which uh, beginning I was like doing like a, like listening to everything that you've done done in preparation for this interview. Okay, I think yeah, you uh, recall it better than I do because some of the stuff I recorded I barely remember. <laughs> it's, it's been quite quite a few albums, yeah. Nice, nice. I just try to try to like clear clear the air. I'm trying to like do my research. I'm like wonder wonder want to know more. Yeah, nice. Yeah, and I know it's also around that time you also uh, 
uh, uh, hooked up with a non-exist with, of course, your fellow DT bandmate, Johan. So how did you end up work, work, hooking up? Uh, he also went to the Music Academy. Uh, that's where I got to know him. Um, and I think before I did a non-exist uh, stuff, I played with Johan on one tour with his other band, Andromeda. Uh, so I would played on one European tour <laughs> with his band. Um, and I think it was after that that I played with Mono Exist with him. And then he also was the session guitar player for Faithful Darkness uh, during the, um, the last shows we did. Hmm. Wow. I never knew that. I mean, I had him on, on the show, show and I don't think, think I've asked him about that. I might try to do it. If I ever do a part two, I'd like to ask him about that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but I think your I think your first uh, release with a not non exist if is the new flesh EP. Tell me about that. Uh, yeah, I think uh, the only stuff that I played on was the live versions. Even though it may say that I played on the album, but I only played on the live tracks. Oh, so so you never like recorded anything? It was just live stuff. Yeah, only the live stuff. Ah. Huh. Hmm. Yes, because I think see, I think Metal Archives like lot lies. I think as I remember doing a couple other interviews with some people, like I try to like like to also like look at that that as as a, as a source or try to like learn learn some more stuff. And I like to like like clear the air because I think Metal Archives is almost like turning into Wikipedia. I need to get their shit together. Yeah, and it could also be that I think I remember that Joan said that he need to put a name on the EP. Um, for a drummer, even though some of the drums were programmed, and he asked me, "Can I put your name?" Sure, um, because I played live with the band. Um, yeah. And then I know in 2016 you uh, did a inter interdependence by Wol Wolves Within. Then it's a lot more kind of like a heart sounds very hardcore sounding. Like how'd you end up hooking up with that project? Yeah, the bass player, Frederick, uh, he was in Thrive, my first band. Um, and then he had the vision of starting a hardcore band, and he asked me if I if I wanted to join. And I didn't really have a band that played a lot back then. Um, so I said, yeah, sure, I can try and play some hardcore music. And uh, it was pretty cool. We played for a couple of years, and then I, th I guess when the pandemic hit, pandemic hit we decided that... We uh, we won't continue because everyone else had other projects going on. Then in twenty, I think twenty eighteen, you also hooked up with a uh, in morning thing, and it's very kind of like very doomy kind of sounding thing music. So how'd you end up hooking up with that band? Uh, I think uh, they um, they were looking for a drummer, and they made a post on I think Instagram, and uh, one of my friends tagged me in the post, and I listened to the band for the first time, and I thought that was that's pretty cool music because some tracks are doomy, but a lot of tracks are very progressive, um, and reminds me of Opeth in some way, uh, and I really liked the music, so I ended up applying, and yeah, now I play with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does have a bit. Because when I first heard it in morning, it does have the kind of like that old school kind of like Opeth kind of vibe, something from from like a, like or morning rise and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. But so tell me about making that that first album from with the Garden of Storms. I thought I think that's just really good. Like like you said, I definitely get some like Opeth vibes with that album. Yeah. Um, when I joined the band, they already had. Um... All, all the all the songs more or less done. Um, so then I I got all the songs and I rewrote all the drum parts um, to fit the way I play. Uh, and the other guys told me, "Go nuts, do whatever you want. We we need something fresh." Um, and then when Tobias, the the one who uh, writes most of the parts, when he heard the drums for the first time, he was like, "Fuck, are you are you gonna play drum solo the entire album? What's going on?" Um, so then we had to change just a few uh, parts because I obviously overplayed yeah. a lot of stuff. Uh, but then uh, once we were satisfied, everyone in the band, it, it was turned out a very cool album. It's very progressive, a lot of the parts, and very difficult to play, but a lot of fun. Yeah, and I just love like the texture and the variety riffing and hooks, especially I feel like every song has like its own identity. 
empty like even than like uh like the, the melancholic like parts in like huntress moon and and even hero fan fan is just has a lot of like riffs in there there so i feel like every song is like a different reflection or a different emotion yeah definitely and then of course the the next album the bleeding veil i think that was a pretty good album tell me about like that what was that like going from garden of storms to the bleeding veil uh, yeah, we, when we did the Bleeding Veil, um, I was uh, with the band from the beginning of the writing process as well. Uh, so then the songs developed in another way because Garden of Storms, I, did, I only got all the songs when they were done. And in uh, the Bleeding Veil, I could uh, write the parts along the way and then change. we changed stuff back and forth. Um, yeah. And uh, it also turned out to be a very cool album. Yeah, just like the leads and everything. I feel like you all stepped it up with that album. Yeah. And then, of course, like I think it was like last year, you end up joining probably one of my all time favorite bands, Dark Tranquility. So, how'd you hook up with like Mikkel and Martin and everybody? Uh, yeah, it was because I played with Johan before. Uh, and when the, um, actually, when I was in the studio to record the Bleeding Veil, I got a text from Johan asking me, do, do you want to try out for Dark Tranquility? And then I was like, holy fucking shit. <laughs> um, so it was kind of hard to focus and finish the album because I was um, I was shocked that I got the question to to try out for the Dark Tranquility. Um, and this was 2021. Yeah, it has to be uh, two years ago. Um, and then uh, me and Joanne went to the re my rehearsal place that I had and, and played some of the songs. And then some days after that, we went to Gothenburg and did a full band rehearsal. Um, that was that was for the first time I met Michael and, and Martin and the other guys. I only yeah. knew and Johan from before. Yeah, and I know no, I had I had last had a Christian Shen on here here, and I think he joined the same time as you. So what was like your? Yeah. I think I asked him that, but I also want to ask you, you what was like your first impression of him? Uh, of Christian? Yeah. I think um, everyone in that room was so nervous because it was a completely new lineup. The band was nervous because we were new guys, and me and Christian. Christian was nervous because he was new in the band. I was nervous because I was new. So I don't really remember a lot. It was just a big emotional blur um, because it, these are my childhood heroes. So the first rehearsal was so many emotions and so much going on that I think I only remember that it felt really awesome and it sounded great. Yeah, because of course you and Christian now being like the new rhythm section, of course you have to like rhythmically try to keep it together because were, were you like nervous at all? Like like filling in the shoes of Anders Yvarp? Uh, yeah, of course I was nervous because this is an old school band that played for like forever with the same drummer. And of course I'm not going to play the same style of Anders does, but I try to make my style fit Star Tranquility as as close as um, it can. Um, so of course I was nervous, but um, I think after a few shows, when I realized that this is going fine, then then I stopped being nervous. Yeah, and do you remember like the first show you did with Dark Tranquility? Yeah, I was uh, in Belgium. I think it was the Alcatraz Festival, uh, and I think just like thirty or forty minutes before entering the stage, the, the guy was like, "By the way, it's going to be uh, recorded." and streamed i was like what the fuck <laughs> first show yeah it'd be yeah. like yeah yeah just like like thrown into the wolves <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah and i do remember the first time seeing you with the band you did that tour with cataclysm last year i saw you i, I was at the at the show in atlanta and that was probably the best best show i've seen seen from y'all yet yeah was that like the first time you've ever played in america yeah, for me it was the first time ever that tour. Yeah, so what was like that, like your like like your first time seeing it, see, seeing it, like of course the U.S. Were you like, wow, this is awesome? Yeah, it was um, because everything was new. I've never been in the states before, so uh, everything was new. I was uh, surprised by all the flavors of the sodas because I I love soda. <laughs> yeah, so, so I do the I. First, yeah, the first thing I did was like try all the kinds of sodas and, and looking at all the massive buildings and, and entering a Walmart. You know, I've only seen that like in movies and YouTube. Yeah. Um, that's, that's uh, the U S for you. Yeah. 
yeah, everything. There was a lot of new experiences. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Yeah, and said so you said you like tried any soda. Is there like a Swedish soda that, that I don't even know about? Maybe Julmust is the, Julmust. the soda you have. Yeah, you have it around Christmas. Um, I don't really know how to um, explain the flavor. It's some kind of some kind of spice, but it's not spicy. Um, Bit of a spicy soda. That just sounds weird. Yeah, yeah, I know no, it's not spicy, but it's some kind of spices inside, yeah, like you use for cooking. Um, but it, fuck, it's almost like a beer, but not. <laughs> Think mm -hmm. of it like a beer soda. Yeah, maybe. sort of like if you order a beer from Wish.com. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's really tasty. It's, it's it, it has a be. special flavor, but it's very tasty. <laughs> yeah, I wish there was a way to like like get it imported to the states. I want to try it. Yeah. Hmm. I might have to do Maybe some research. Is. Yeah, do it. Yeah. But but going back to that Atlanta show, that was great. Because I remember before the show, I actually had interviewed Mikkel there. And I think it was, I think it was like like last minute. I know Christian couldn't make the tour. So you had like Mike Bear filling in on base. So so how did how did you end up working up with, with him? And how did he like gel for that tour? Oh, um, I th didn't he do like a um, session a tour with Insomnium? Oh, Both yeah, I remember that. Vocals? I remember that. I remember or when I interviewed Mikkel, Kel, he told me, like, apparently he didn't even listen to, like, anything. He just, like, played along along with it, and then he just nailed it perfectly. And I, and I remember when he told me that, I was like, holy shit, how is that possible? Yeah, so I think that's the reason why we picked him, because he seemed like a... He seemed like be a natural talent and puts a lot of work into it, and uh, and he delivered very, very good playing for the entire tour. Oh yeah, and I know know you're also working on your first record with Dark Tranquility. So what's the status with that? Because I know you were currently entered the studio to lay down your drum parts. Yeah, I finished the drum parts uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, it's, uh, two weeks ago I finished the drum parts. I think Johan might be finished with the guitars. Uh, because I know Michael started with the with the vocals, so we're uh, still in the progress of um, recording all the parts. Yeah, yeah. Is there like a tentative release date? Because I'm guessing, hopefully, like summer, fall next year. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to answer that. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You'll you'll tell me when I turn off the recorder. <laughs> 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 but yeah, but. The, yeah, yeah, because I am looking forward to that, and of course, I'm looking forward to seeing you at Prog Power next year, which is going to be awesome. That'll be oh, like yeah. my fourth time seeing Dark Tranquility. Oh, nice. It's, yeah, and and talking about like, I also want to talk about like your your approach to drums because usually the drummer's job is to like lay down the beat and keep the the tempo, otherwise it would just end up like a complete shit show. So when it comes to like be like like the writing the drums do you need to hear what the guitars are doing in order to lay down your beat or do you usually have like your whole like a whole drum pattern everything written and then the rest of the band writes according to that well i i listen to um to the guitars and all the other instruments uh, and i either i want to um either i want to follow the guitar or i want to do something completely different than the guitar uh, it it's about um the song itself. Um, so either some parts I want to, like, like is it called exaggerate? No, I don't know. Um, fuck, English, <laughs> I forgot the word. Um, but uh, some parts I want to follow the guitars and make, uh, play the, like in sync with the guitars, for example, the kick drums. Um, and at some at some parts I listen to the vocals and to see if, if there's something in the vocals that I could have, uh, um, play along too with the drums. Yeah. So I, I listen to everything in the music and then I write the drums from that. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and I remember so, and it, somebody at, at, did, well, did an interview with like a drummer, drummer and they say like, like drums, like with is like, think, think of drumming is like just a rhythm based instrument. But I feel like it's also, so an, a very emotional kind of instrument, but like, because like maybe the way you play sort of like channels, like an emotion, like the way you like hit like a hi hat hat with, had with the snare or with the right symbol, it could also reflect a different kind of like feel feel with the like the songs or just like the whole vibe and everything. Yeah, of course, because it's not just that you hit the drum; it's the way you hit the drum, the dynamics, and where on the drum you hit. 
Uh, and I think also the the mood you have and the way you move your body that also affects the sound. And sort of like, of course, yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, sorry, you were saying. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, depending on the song, but a lot of songs I put um, a lot of emotion into the way I'm playing. Nice, and all, and still talking about drums. I'm always curious about like your drum setup. Like, what kind of drums that you play? Like drums, pedals, like sticks and cymbals and all that stuff. Uh, okay, uh, drums. I play different kits right now. I only almost only practice at home with a Ro Roland Digital drum kit. Um, and then before the recording, I practice uh, on one of my drum kits that I have in Gothenburg, uh, Pearl MLX. It's like really old school, that the one that Jeff Pocaro and the other guys played back in the day. Um, then last Saturday, uh, when I played with In Morning in Stockholm, I used uh, my DW drum kit. Um, so different drum kits and cymbals. I use minor cymbals. Uh, drumsticks, I, I'm endorsed by Vin, Vincent Drumsticks, Swedish company. Um, and pedals, I change pedals every now and then. For the last time, I've, um, I've been using Tama Speed Cobra. Before that, I used Redline Pearl Eliminators. Uh, and then the Polish Charsky Kapito or whatever it's pronounced. Like. Nice. And so kind of like in the end, to wrap things up, what's ne next for you? Because I know you mentioned you just finished the drumming for the new Jar Tranquility album. Is just anything else with your other projects that you'd like to plug? Maybe a chance you could bring In Morning to the States for a tour one day? Uh, that would be cool. Uh, this year I'm having a break from now on. So I'm just going to practice on whatever I feel like. I don't have any more shows, no recordings, no nothing. Um, in, a, in the beginning of next year, I think I have one show with a Kiss tribute band that I play with. Um, so And we do all the makeup and wigs and yeah. dresses. <laughs> Try to look it's like a Peter lot of Chris. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Um, but then we'll see. Probably there's going to be some Dark Tranquility shows before the summer. Yeah. Probably. Well, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And of course, like I said, I'm going to see you at Prog Power next year. That's definitely one of the shows I'm looking forward to. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so thank you, Joachim, for this interview. Great to be able to talk with you today. It's just any final words you want to say to the viewers that are watching this to close this out? Uh Enjoy the interview and enjoy all the other interviews you do, because um, this is a really cool channel, uh, and enjoy your weekend. Yeah, and I'm so glad to finally have all the Dark Tranquility. I've interviewed every member now, so you were like the last member yeah, I needed. Nice. So thank you. Thank you for this, man. I oh. really appreciate it. Of course. Uh, so everybody, Joachim from Dark Tranquility and in morning, we'll see you next time.